Welcome to 1991 Movie Rewind, the podcast where we watch and review every movie released in 1991, from the all-time greatest classics to the critically panned and everything in between. We will rediscover forgotten fan favorites and uncover hidden gems as we explore the depths of direct video. Join us in our celebration of the fun, unique, and diverse films of this highly underrated year. This week, we watched Ma. <laughs> In Mom, Jean Bates plays Emily Dwyer, mother to Los Angeles TV reporter Clay. He has been reporting on a potential serial killer around the area, and she inadvertently rents out a spare room to the killer, who is actually a man that turns into a werewolf-like creature. Emily is bitten by this monster, and now has to juggle her secret life as a bloodthirsty demon and a loving mother to her kids. Screenplay by Patrick Rand, directed by Patrick Rand, and released on June 19th, 1991. I'll assume that you haven't seen this movie before, but no. have you heard of this movie before? Uh, no to both. Yeah. I, I kind of vaguely recall hearing about it, but I don't think our video store carried it, at least not the one that I worked at, and that's how I know most of these direct video horror movies is just from my time walking the aisles of the video store and seeing the box this, art. This was direct-to-video? I think it's direct-to-video. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's no box office information to this. Uh, it wasn't a TV movie that we could find, so I'm pretty sure it was a rental premiere on June 19th. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's, um... It's like one of those movies that was probably on, what was that, Up All Night? Yeah, it could have easily been on USA Up All Night. We've seen several movies that have appeared on USA Up All Night by this point. I think like Terror Within 2, but also stuff like Freddy's Dead has also been on there. So they've had some more Yeah, and more then like Rock and Roll High School forever. Yeah, yeah. so it, was it wasn't just like cheesy, shocky horror on there. It was just kind of a bunch of random stuff depending on the week and the host. It's... This is nearly what I want from a direct-to-video horror movie. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the cheesier stuff. Yeah. I like the goofier things. This was surprising to me in how much human drama was in this movie. You know, it wasn't so much about the werewolf killing... I guess you call it a werewolf. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like... It's like a mix between werewolf and vampire. Then they kind of allude to that in the script, too. Okay, because I thought it was straight up a werewolf, but I was like, I thought werewolves came out only during, like, full moons. This guy is, like, he can every single night. whenever he wants to. Yeah. But, yeah. He's kind of... But, yeah, I guess it's like a mixture of a werewolf-vampire... Thing. Something. But it's yeah. like part man, part werewolf, part vampire. Like, I don't know, like Blade or something. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Blade is not a, a werewolf. But because he can be out, because he was out in the sun. He could be out in the daylight. They wear, he, he wears but he sunglasses. But he just wears all sunglasses. The time. And that's mostly just to cover the fact that his eyes changed and don't look like normal human eyes. Yeah. Anymore. Although, in the scene where Emily is transitioned, They make it seem like because she knocked his glasses off, Mm -hmm. that that's why he had to attack her. And I wasn't sure if it's because that forced the transformation, or if that's just because, oh, you found my secret now, I have to do something about it. Yeah, that's that's what I thought that was. It's like, oh, you saw my yellow eyes, I don't know how to explain this, so I'm gonna turn into this monster immediately and bite you. And turn you into one as well. Yeah. I'm not going to kill you. I will do you the mercy of just turning you into another me, I guess. Yeah. So, it's it's less about that and more about Clay's struggles. <laughs> because he, <laughs> yeah. like, like he, he learns about what his mom is up to and the fact that she is also now this monster. 
very early on and yeah it has didn't... to reconcile and confronts her about it and he's like going through some shit like with his wife or not wife his uh, fiance who's having his child and then also like trying to hide this thing from his mother and also reporting the story yeah sort of like what we saw in dead silence like reporting on the story that you're actively involved in yeah uh, like he's he's not sleeping and he's just you know drinking a lot yeah and there's a lot of exposition and time spent with clay and what his struggles are personally rather than following along the mom uh and watching her kill things because clay locks her up as soon as possible yeah uh, and doesn't I've, let her out to, to this murder. movie was just like i don't know it was going places where i was like where is this gonna go and it could have gone a lot of different directions at any given time yeah i thought it was gonna be like let the right one in or something where he all of a sudden has to kill for her to bring yeah. her her food which he sort like they show that at least once yeah they show but that he's once like i can't do this <laughs> acquiesces and has like a, a lot of guilt and regret about the whole thing and um again like really focuses on his emotional distraught uh situation rather than mom's hungry <laughs> and so yeah and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I don't think they knew how to make this monster work. When we first see the monster in the opening segment, you know, Nestor, who is the original, I don't know, original, original in this movie, original werewolf vampire guy, when he takes his first victim on screen, it's just a really funny fake ass mask. Yeah, I mean, the... It's laughably bad. Yeah, this is no American Werewolf in London type uh, gore or makeup artistry. <laughs> it's, yeah, not even... It really looks like someone just bought something off of a normal retail Yeah, like, party, like a Party City yeah. monster mask. And they're like, okay, we'll flash, we'll flash it for a second on screen, and then we'll cut away as soon as possible to you know like an overhead shot where you don't have to to see the see how bad it looks <laughs> and then when when they show the grandma as the world <laughs> it's the same damn mask with just like a big ass with white like wig a, yeah white <laughs> <laughs> so it looks even funnier <laughs> yeah and it's tough to know i know like in my tease last week that i said this is like a horror comedy i don't know if it's supposed to be a comedy or if it's i mean just... i was cracking up yeah. The entire time. I yeah, I mean, know. it was, like, maybe unintentionally funny, but there weren't, like, jokes in it, something like what we saw with uh, Blood Diner, you know? Uh, that wasn't for this podcast, but, you know, like, the yeah, movie yeah, Blood yeah. Diner, where that was clearly making jokes. Or even something like Freddy's Dead, where they're clearly, like, giving punchlines. There were no punchlines in this. This was just it's... laughable because of the circumstances. Yeah, and... And it's an old lady killing yeah. people. It's just the... And then a lot of the acting is way over the top. It can be, yeah. Like, especially near the end when Clay is... Like, he falls out of the window. And then he... You think he's dead. Mm-hmm. But then he comes back in and he's climbing up these, well, like army crawling up because he's probably he like broken, broken a yeah. leg or something. And just like him, like <laughs> screaming for his wife was funny to me. <laughs> I don't know. Even though he's like dying. <laughs> but I don't think he's playing it comedically. I think he's playing everything seriously. Yeah. He's it's trying just to like... be like a drunk who's like really dealing with self doubt and regret and like. It's like over the top. He's known. I don't think that's that's the intention, but maybe it is because of how lackluster the effects are, and they really don't focus on the gore much at all. I mean, there are some kills, but they largely happen off camera, and then you see like bags of body parts, and, and yeah. the blood is from already severed limbs, or you know, bags full of yeah. Goo. You just see blood. You, it, just like one when they show the when the police find these dead bodies that are being like mutilated they just show 
their neck with like a hole in it. Uh huh. And that's like about it. <laughs> and I wanted it to go more. That's why I said like this is almost what I would want out of this type of movie. I want to see those effects. Like I want to see the creativity. Yeah, of they probably the deaths and the gore and the don't blood have and like and a the makeup artistry for that. Probably know. not. But it does hurt things. Uh, it, because, I mean, they focus so much on character <laughs> rather than, let's see the fun stuff of Grandma Werewolf prowling the town. Mm -hmm. That's what you're here for. If you know what the movie's about, that's what you expect to see. But yet she's, like, kind of locked in her room for the most part. It's, it's unfortunate in that regard. Uh, I, I do like the Nestor character. I think he was definitely over the top. Yeah. Played by Byron James. Uh, Nestor Duvalier. He's a uh, very gravelly voice. Very soft-spoken, but gravelly voice. And he's like, I wish you wouldn't have done that. Type of a yeah. delivery to everything he says. His character dies early on. Yeah, once he died, I was like, where is this movie going to go now? Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought they would be... Um... Passes the torch to mom yeah that's what's supposed to sort of happen in a way not intentionally he doesn't yeah. mean to die yeah i thought um, that they were like he, somehow he was gonna like make her his protege or something i don't know right yeah. kind of like interview with the vampire i have no idea i'm just <laughs> yeah. thinking of like other movies yeah like you are now my protege so i'm gonna teach you the ways and i thought that was gonna be the movie mm -hmm. but then when he he dies like i don't know 20 minutes in i have no idea i was like maybe even okay. less yeah yeah then i was like what <laughs> what's what now mm -hmm. yeah i mean we see him early on in this the opening scene where He's with there's like a woman, some woman at the at this bus some stop, bus stop yeah. that's that's gonna go to L A. She's going to go there, I think, to be an actress or something. I don't remember exactly if she. It said was on even. Christmas Eve. Yeah, on Christmas Eve, I think she's getting kicked out by her father or something. But it was really and weird. That... It's possible because of like the the pregnancy part of it, because you know after that scene, Clay she, goes to the report and says seem... that the serial killer is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, targeting pregnant women. Yeah. And so, like, maybe she was kicked out because she got knocked But she up. didn't seem, like, she wasn't down sure. in the dumps about it. No. Like she was, being... like, hitting on him. She was yeah. hitting on Nestor. Who's, I like, thought her dad was, like... 15 years older than her, at least. Yeah. That's, like, her... You see her dad just, like, drop her off and drive off. But she's not... I mean, neither one of them say goodbye to each other. I don't know. He Well, he, he was, like get the hell out or whatever. Yeah, it's like you're just like your mother or something. I don't know. We never see them again. So yeah. like, you know, well one because but she, she didn't dies seem and... like <laughs> but sad by this parting with her father. No. She was yeah, like was... anticipating going to LA. Like on was... Christmas Eve. On then... Christmas Eve. Which is a weird thing to have in the movie cuz it really doesn't come into play at all. Other than to show how uncaring Carla, the daughter, is in the next scene with the mom. Uh, yeah. Where she gives the same gift every year, just in a different color. And how she could have been there in person if she wanted to, but decided to just call instead. You know, so that was like the only reason... I don't know. Like, otherwise, the Christmas stuff was completely ancillary. I don't know why that was a thing. Yeah, that's why I was thinking, like, oh, this could have been a Christmas movie for us yeah if we would but, have known but i mean it was really just that it one was scene. like that five to ten minutes and since it's la you don't really notice the christmas -iness anyway yeah when the daughter does finally visit she's like ugh, winter's in la because she's coming in with like a big fur coat or mm -hmm. wherever i don't even know where she's from east coast new or york whatever. yeah okay so but anyway nestor's there and kills this woman at the bus station the woman, quickly, I'll just mention, in case anybody watches this and is wondering, it's Claudia Christian, who is best known for Susan Ivanova in Babylon 5. So if you notice, you know, oh, that looks like that person from Babylon 5. Yep, it was. She'll be in, like, five more 1991 movies, so I won't get in her more. So she dies, like, an opening scene, and, like, Nestor does, like, this... When he's biting her, it sounds like this fake Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. You know, it's like, 
Or like that's like his eating noise. Yeah. And then you have like this funny fake ass mask on top of it. So it's just very comical over, you know, like silly, silly effects. And I wanted more of that type of thing. Anyway, Emily's renting out her room because she wants money and company because Clay is a grown ass man and out of the house with uh, Alice, his girlfriend slash fiance. I'm not sure if they're even engaged yet, but they are expecting a baby together and um we know that they're not married because that's like one of the next lines from the mom's like oh and so when are you going to get married and very quickly Nestor, who's pretending to be blind at this point in the daylight to hide the fact that he's he has sunglasses is coming in and he rents the room from her like instantly sort of like a suburban commando scenario i guess where you know you just show up knock on the door and it's like i want to rent your room okay let me show you where it is yeah the- she well, she had something on her front door. Yeah, she had a room to let room sign. Room to let, yeah. But still, I mean, there's like no. I, don't, I was thinking, no like, who walks around? Like that. Yeah, there's no like doing background checks. Yeah. Nothing. It's yeah. just like, oh, okay, you can live with me. Mm-hmm. Uh I I just checked the list. There, mom was not on the up all night list. Oh, well, that's too bad. It seems like it'd be a good movie for that. Maybe Joe Bob Briggs had it on his Monster Vision at some point instead. I mean, uh, maybe it was the list I'm looking at. I have no idea, but I don't see it on the list. Okay. They couldn't have shown everything. Right. So, yeah, Nestor's pretending to be blind, and it's a very, very quick But how did he know that she had a room to rent? acting like a blind guy i don't know like how other than just walking around the neighborhood and seeing the sign yeah but wouldn't that be a question like you're blind how did you know i have a room to rent it should be (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i mean there's no arrows pointing to the house well i mean he's supposedly (laughs) blind i know he's supposed to be blind (laughs) By yeah. word of mouth, that's <laughs> like, oh, that old lady needs a, a roommate. But basically, like, he attacks her the like first that same night because she like tries to cook him like this big meal, and he's like, no, I can't eat that. I only eat out, and you know, she he's, pushes the yeah. issue and freaks out, and like he, she like knocks the glasses off of him in some weird way. Yeah, and he freaks out and bites her. She she tries to like spoon or spoon feed him. She's like, yeah. oh, "I'll just take a little bite," and he like kind of waves it away from him, and his glasses fall off. She sees his yellow eyes. He turns into monster, bites her. Yeah. And then I mean, I'm glad they got through that stuff pretty fast. So yeah, basically the mom is transitioning now into this creature of some kind. Um, you got the meter man who comes by and he's the second kill, but it's all off screen again. Well, they, her son Clay didn't know about this until her pork chop man called her son Uh asking where his mom was. Yeah, because she comes and gets pork chops every single Thursday Thursday. and will call if he's not, if she's not going to come and she didn't call. Mm-hmm. So, but I I was like, how does he... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's good to have that kind of support system, right? You know, yeah. Say, but hey, the meat man is calling her I know son. You're, you're, I mean, the mother's elderly. Something could have happened. Yeah, yeah, you know? I get so that. It's... But why have a meat man call you? He he felt obligated. I don't know. He was being a nice, friendly neighbor. He's like, look, this is unusual. This never happens. I'm worried. Go check on her. Yeah, and that's when, you know, Clay is cr- confronting Nestor. But th- does he kill him that night, or is that... Yeah, it happens, like, pretty much instantly. Almost. Well, maybe, I think maybe not, not that not, night. Yeah, I think another day or two goes by, and... Something happens. It's, oh no it's no after no! Clay follows them. Yeah, Clay follows them. Clay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't trust Nestor, but he um, doesn't kill him. He, instead, he follows them in his VW bus as they scour the alleys and escort this homeless person first into a diner. 
So they, that the homeless person can eat because they want to eat that person, and the person they're eating needs to. Yeah, but Nestor's like, we we shouldn't do this. We don't have time, and I'm like, what what time constraints do you have, Nestor? Well, I guess they but, just don't want to get caught. I don't know. I guess, but like, okay, caught. I don't know. <laughs> I think that was just sort of a, a throwaway line that just didn't make sense, and then yeah, I mean. Then after they feed him, they take him to the alley and, and kill him again off screen. Like yeah, all this and stuff is off screen. Clay is following them down this deep alley. He hears like that moaning and the homeless man, like crying out for help or whatever. And that's when he sees his mom's face and her eating on this guy yeah but <laughs> yeah he goes and like throws up and the, the weird thing is it's animal. like when they're done eating this guy he just drives up to them in his van and he's like get in like <laughs> mm-hmm. wouldn't you i mean why confront her that way to know like to catch her red-handed basically okay i, I would be like I that, guess that the removes next... all deniability. Like, well, no, that wasn't me. It was just somebody who looked like me. Yeah, I mean, just like the next morning, I would do it the next morning. But whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Should be I mean, like, hey, not a, he's not afraid of his mother. But so, you know, in yeah, that he's way. not really afraid of Nestor. He's like, no, not you. You find your own way home. Yeah. And that's I don't know. Is that the night that he kills Nestor? Or is it like another day? <laughs> I think it's I yeah. I think it's pretty much like pretty much that night later on because yeah. yeah, he stabs Nestor with like the knitting needles and he pretends to die and then he gets up and he's like, "Haha, I'm invincible!" And then somehow he gets like burned. Yeah, and his hands start to burn. He but gets then burned on the stove. He gets burned on the stove and then his entire body just goes up in flames and then he disappears. I forget how he f- fully catches on flames, uh, on fire. I think they did something to him. Did, isn't that when Clay used like that spray or whatever yeah. to like have it blow like up on him? Yeah, yeah, right. air, yeah. Yeah. So he's like fully engulfed in flames. They put a coat over him to kind of like contain the fire, and then he's just like his body. His, his body vanished after that. So Nestor's gone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quick. Quick, easy, effective character. But, like, all this is... Yeah, all this is happening to Clay. And, I mean, this guy's, like, mental health is declining. Yeah. And the mom's, like, sort of trying to explain, but he doesn't want to hear it and doesn't, you know... He's just, like, disappointed in his mom. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't know what to do now. Yeah, and, the, you know, he also has, like, struggle of how afraid should I be for my own safety and for my wife or, you know, for Alice or in my unborn child and all this kind of stuff too. You know, he's like trying to reconcile those emotions because she's, the mom is saying, no, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt anyone in my family. I don't, you know, that's not, yeah, that's not what this is. I have enough control over this whole thing, but I can't eat regular food and you know, all this kind of other stuff. They sort of, sort of go through the rules in a way but they also just make them up as they go along by saying well i'm not the same as nestor so the rules that apply to him don't always apply to me yeah because i i'm assuming because she's like a young whatever vampire werewolf and he's been a vampire werewolf for ages i don't know that's, like yeah that's it? what they try to yeah say is you know Nestor's and she's been just been for one for like a couple days so but she's, she's like still newly... largely immortal because she can get shot and yeah, not she... die. Yeah. Because that happens relatively quickly <laughs> in the movie as well. When she tries to take on another homeless person and, and, and kill him. But turns out to be an un- undercover cop that like chases her... Where she chases him onto the roof and he shoots her hand and, you know... Yeah, and then shoots her in the head. I, and then... Um, but, you know, she still is recovered from that, and that's when the cop gets scared, and he just jumps off the roof. <laughs> yeah. 
to his death. And Clay is following her again and yeah. is right there where the cops are. So it adds like this other layer that you're, you know, sort of thinking in the back of your mind, okay, is this going to be like one of these things where he is going to take the fall for his mother? Is he going yeah, to decide that's what to I th- do this I purposely? thought that was another thing that I thought that they were going to blame Clay as the killer. Yeah. Because, you know, he's, Locking you know, him up, leaving her free to do whatever she needs to. Right. That's where I thought that movie was going. And then I also thought it was going to be like how, you know, Let the Right One In is where he's going to be the one that has to kill for her to eat and survive. And it kind of went none of those places. Yeah. And, you know, he's like best friends with the, t- well, not best friend. He's just like friendly. There's with a the, relationship with this lieutenant. With the t- yeah, the lieutenant guy so you know the cops you know, when nest or not when clay saw that well he doesn't even know that it's a cop until he sees his face because he's like oh i know this guy he's a cop but yeah. then the other cops come and they're like get away they they think it's him but yeah, then it's like what are you doing here? what are you Why doing are you here? here yeah and that's when the lieutenant is like oh don't arrest him he's you know so-and-so from the nightly news don't you know and then that's when you know clay finds out you know was you know a cop and tells his mom like when he comes home he tells his mom like you almost ate a cop and she's like oh i didn't know and he's like well would have been better if it was just a homeless man or whatever and she's like well yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah especially legally (laughs) yeah (laughs) So, yeah, he has the idea to install bars on the windows and everything. And there's, you know, like tie her to the bed and tie, stuff. Yeah, tie like her locking the, bed the door. And locks the door and everything. So, you know. And she's like moaning a lot because she's like, I'm hungry. There's a surprising lack of, you know, motherly guilt that's thrown on Clay throughout this whole thing, too. There's some near the end. Yeah, near the end. She's like, I'm but, your mother, don't you? Yeah, you'd think that she'd be laying that on thicker yeah saying on. like don't you want to help your mom <laughs> yeah but it, it doesn't happen she just kind of lets she's herself just like be moaning saying i'm hungry and and then you know he does make her like an a meal yeah and he's like you can eat this she's like i can't and he just tells her to try and she's trying and he's like oh, i'm gonna throw up yeah so i mean she finds different ways to get out and kills people off screen yeah. Including this this guy, Stoney, who we're supposed to know, but we don't know. Yeah, Dr. Like, William Carruthers, a.k.a. Who is Stoney. This? Some dude from their... Their doctor. Childhood past or something like that. Like, we're supposed to know who Stoney is, because they're all like, oh, man, Stoney. Yeah, but whatever it is... And we, I'm like, we, who the hell is Stoney? <laughs> they don't even important. show this. They don't show the man at all. They don't show the death. They just they mention just the that Stoney died. <laughs> on one of these TV newscasts, because Clay is reporting it live, and when he hears that it's Stoney, he swears on live TV. <laughs> yeah, that was and, like, gets that fired. Was hilarious. He's like, he's God, like, fucking damn it. Yeah. <laughs> he says it on live. Because <laughs> he's like going through like this mental descent. And he's like, okay, one of my friends just got killed, obviously by my own mother. Yeah, and I he can't knows. say any of this on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so he just walks off screen going, God, fucking damn it. <laughs> yeah. And then the lady who's like at the, like the news anchor, she's like, well, yeah, we'll that's it. More. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, how is that not funny? Yeah, I mean, it is. I, I just don't think it's meant to be, like, a joke. I don't know. I, I feel think... like it's supposed to be more serious than it comes off. <laughs> but... I don't know. I, I, I think at that point, is like that's when he's deciding, okay, maybe I will play more of, like, the Igor role and support this monster in Yeah, my that's life. when he, like, goes to the bar and, and... And tries to actively pick up the prostitute, Beverly Hills. Yeah, that that's probably the only joke in the entire movie. Is yeah. This sex worker woman, she... She's, she introduces herself to him because he's just sitting at the bar alone, whatever, depressed. Drinking up a storm. Yeah, and she's like, hi, I'm Beverly. And she points to her boobs and says, and these are my hills. And, that's, <laughs> and, then, she, and then she says, get it? <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, whatever. <laughs> like, he couldn't care less. Yeah, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, things one thing leads to another, and, and he brings her home to mom. Um, and Alice hasn't really seen Clay in a long time because he's staying over at the mom's house trying to take care of things and, and he's not sleeping or whatever and so Alice tries to drive by sees the sees them both go in together and like you Clay know, with this makes woman, the assumption yeah, that, that he's he's gonna having sleep with an her. affair in yeah. his mother's house meanwhile <laughs> meanwhile Clay is basically saying okay here's the deal we're not gonna sleep together I just need you to pretend like you're my sister Carla go upstairs to my mother's room and pretend you're, you know, giving her a surprise visit. She's kind of out of it. So just, like, go up there and do it. And, like, sort of sending her off to her death. Yeah. And then he has, like, a change of heart. But he passes out. And the mother comes across her uh, anyway. Because Carla still decides to go through with it. Whatever. Um, yeah, she... Well, that's when the mom is moaning in yeah, her room. Yeah, the mom's moaning and Clay's she, completely Beverly passed out. Hills, and Beverly, instead of leaving, decides to go check up on her. Yeah, mother. decides to check up on her and that's when she's like, oh, hey. Like, she gets the sister's name wrong, mm-hmm. Carla, like 50 times. Yeah. And she's it's like, like, hey, hey it's I'm, your daughter, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> and then, rawr. And then, that's the only uh, time where we sort of see, like, gore i guess is when she gets her neck bit off yeah a little bit i mean they linger more on it when she's already like dead and they yeah they show they her show the aftermath the autopsy picture. or whatever yeah i think the biggest is actually when later on when you see the face in the bags of in the garbage bags I think that could possibly be the goriest part. Yeah, but I thought that was only Carla's face. Yeah, that was Carla's face. Was so, that a mixture of people's bodies or just her? It could have just been Carla's. Actually, there is another gory spot, like very near at the end when the last cop gets killed. Yeah. Because you see like his stomach or whatever open yeah, up, like ripped open. a little bit. But, I mean, yeah, a lot of the stuff, I wanted to see the action of it happen. Yeah, the, I mean, they probably just don't have... Not just the before and after. Yeah, they don't have the ability to show that, I guess. I don't know. I'm sure that's what it was. It I mean, it almost has to be. especially like the if this money is, to do that uh, type of effect. Exactly, yeah. For something, if this was completely dark to video, then, of course, the budget's going to be lower. But sometimes that's what can be fun, is seeing how creative you can be with a low budget and what you can get away with. Instead, here they really focus on the human element of everything, and it brings the pacing down a bit. Um, but yeah, anyway, Carla does come to visit, and super assholey to the mom. Um, and long story short, she ends up getting killed. Killed as by, well, um, by the mom. mom. <laughs> but I think at this point... The mom doesn't know that, didn't know that she killed her daughter until Clay sees her, her dead body in a bag. And she's like, you killed Carla. Yeah, you killed your own daughter. And then she's like, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. So she's losing it. Yeah. He's a complete wreck now, He's too. fucking going he's like self-destructing down a spiral. Completely. And he's got to, like, clean up her. after her stuff. He only like, found Carla because he was, like, stumbling drunk and fell on top of the garbage bags. Yeah, but so. he, he takes those garbage bags and throws it off a cliff yeah, into he, the ocean. Yeah, he burns up, like, pieces of meat yeah, on like, the grill and then, like, tosses oh, stuff off Oh, we didn't the, even talk like, about the best character yeah. in the entire movie <laughs> yet. <know>. Yeah, <laughs> we have a contender for best animal in a movie again uh-huh. for this year. <laughs> so, yeah, gr- Grandma or Mom has this cute dog named winston he's like a bulldog Mm -hmm. mix i think because he's kind of a big he's not he's not a pure english yeah like a butch bulldog (laughs) like a pit bull bulldog underbite type of a thing yeah and so he's just kind of like always around he's just chilling around the couch (laughs) and the chairs running away from things like the poor dog and I think, yeah, he was, like, looking at the, the meat being grilled, right? Yeah, and he was, like, licking his lips. Yeah. And we're like, no. <laughs> like, no, you can't have 
can't you're eating um, you can't your aunt you. or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. A human. And so. And then it, like, temporarily goes in, like, exorcist territory where she is being tied up and, like, her voice is growling and it's, like, going yeah. blah, 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 Yeah, she's, kind of stuff. she's got, like, a lower voice. And that's when she starts to do, like, the guilt tripping. Like, I'm your mother. Don't you care about me type yeah. stuff. And somehow the cops are able to make enough of a connection. Uh, oh, actually, I know why. Because after everything is done, Beverly Hills is killed, but nobody knew who she was. Even the cops did not know who she was. And so to sort of like cover his tracks and make sure that everything was fine, he goes back to that bar and speaks to the bartender. and like, hey, have you seen your friend around? Like kind of knowingly. Yeah. And so like, I think the bartender probably went to the cops after the body was identified and said, hey, But I also motherfucker. thought it was like Alice too, because Alice was Also Alice noticed... thought something was up. Yeah. Because... Yes, because of the the affair thing, and also the cops came around to ask Clay some questions, and yeah. Yeah, the the cops came to their place, Alice and Clay's, and Alice is like, he's not here, he's at her, his mom's, let me take you there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember why, but yeah. Um, they said they just had questions, and she's like, well, he's not here. Because she kicked him out. Yeah, and she's like, he's at his mom's, let me take you there. Yeah. And she like she has a key to his mom's house, so she just like opens the door. But that's when they, the second she opens the door, that's when they hear all the moaning and whatever. Because that's when Clay's trying to like tie her up. Yeah, yeah so they, they think that he's being abusive to her. He actually hits, like, one of the cops with chains at one point. Yeah. Um, I, not knowing that it's the cops, I don't think, but at least not at that, that stage. But anyway, all <laughs> when all is said and done, she kills again. The mom kills again. And then basically like, burns herself. <laughs> Oh God! To in, well, in yeah, order to like kills... sort of like end the suffering. Well, and, like, it makes the cycle it of seem well because that's when Clay, um, you know, Clay's trying to defend. Like she's she's coming after Alice, and he's like, "No, don't go after Alice. Like think about your grandchild or whatever." Yeah, and like something clicks in the monster's brain. He's like, "Oh, I so am then probably she's, human." Yeah, so then she's like going after him, but then also going after the cops, and then she kind of like throws Clay across the room and and, out the window and out the window and that's when she looks out the window and sees his body we all like it's assumed that he died because he just is laying there not moving and that's when she like screams out the window she's like no (laughs) and i think that's where she was like okay i'm gonna go and kill myself because i killed my son yeah it could be uh, and so yeah he's able to but he's able to crawl through and yeah that's when he like army crawls his way back and he's like calling for alice and that's when he sees like his mom like in the kitchen but then and she like, gives like a like a knowing wink to him it's like it's all over type of a thing yeah uh, or something and like, she just almost like a thumbs up like hey i'm done for you know, yeah, I know. Like I'm burnt then, to a crisp now. You don't have to worry about me anymore. And then she dies, yeah. yeah. And then it's like a slow reveal of like, who did she eat? And like, who comes down the stairs first? It's Alice. And then the lieutenant comes down the stairs. And then Winston comes out from around the corner. Yeah. So the only thing that's left is the second cop that's no name. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay, <Jones> cool. <laughs> or something. Or Daniels. It's like, good. The yeah. one that we don't care about is gone. Uh, so. No, no room for a sequel. I'm afraid, but that's okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was entertaining, yeah. but I really wanted more gore. That's all I can really say about it. It's like, you know, I, I like how the human element was handled. I just think there was too much of it. It wasn't enough of a balance. All right. So we'll talk about cast and crew real quickly. There are a couple interesting cast members in here. Um, but first we'll talk about Patrick Rand, who was the writer and director of this. This is his only credit for either of those roles. He is mostly an editor. 
he did uh, the editing for The Unborn, which we have already watched. Hmm. Uh, he was also the editor for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure Number 1 and some other random movies. Um, Clay Dwyer was played by Mark Thomas Miller. He was on a TV show with Courtney Cox back in the 80s called Misfits of Science. He's also been on several TV movies. He was in the movie Ski School. And then this was one of his last major roles uh, because in 1991, apparently, he was in some sort of a disfiguring accident uh, oh. and instead went into contracting and is building houses and does engineering and stuff. And he's had multiple houses that have been on MTV Cribs that he personally helped build. So he's gone into success in other areas of life. Uh, Jean Bates, Emily Dwyer, or Mom, we'll see her again next week in our next movie. Um, but she's also in movies like Grand Canyon, Public Enemy Number 2. Uh, she also has a prominent role. I'm not sure how prominent. It's been a while since I've seen Mulholland Drive, but she's in Mulholland Drive. And also a razor head. Oh, is she one of those old... Okay. Yeah, she's one of the older people the in Mulholland older Drive. older people. I, I know exactly. Okay, I'm picturing it in my It's head. been a long time since I've seen that. She was also in uh, several episodes of Days of Our Lives in the mid-70s. She was in the TV show called Ben Casey in the early to mid-60s, along with Harry Landers, who played that bartender. Uh, she's basically been active on screen since the 1940s and radio before that. She's just a lifelong actress. She's in stuff like The Phantom, Sergeant Mike, and Mask of Dijon back in the 40s. Uh, we already talked about Byron James a little bit. He's going to be in the 1991 movie Ultimate Desires. I think he might be best known for roles in, like, Blade Runner, uh, 48 Hours and Another 48 Hours. He's been in Fifth Element, Enemy Mine, Nightmare at Noon, uh, and also Cherry 2000. Wait. Okay. I, I mean, we watched Cherry 2000 yeah. recently. I'm trying to picture him in there, and I... He's, he's probably he's in, just one of the bad guys. Yeah, he's, he's in there. He always plays a bad guy. He, he almost always plays a bad guy. Mary Beth... Mary Beth McDonough, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, played Alice. She's best known for her role as Erin Walton on The Waltons, which lasted for 200 plus episodes plus multiple TV movies as well. But she does have a couple other smaller parts, like a horror movie called Mortuary she was also in. Beverly Hills was played by, did you recognize her? No. Played by Stella Stevens, who we've seen in Terror Within 2. She was the love interest of Arlie Ermey's character, the older scientist lady. Okay. So that, that's who Beverly Hills was. Also better known as the mom of the Terror Within 2's writer-director, Andrew Stevens. Oh, okay. So, so we'll see her again in Last Call. It's weird to see her in this role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this very matronly scientist type person in Terror Within 2 and then completely different character here. Yeah. And then uh, just two other... It was other... Butch's grandma. Butch's grandmother, yes. <laughs> and two other quick little mini pausing on the credits here. We got the meter man was played by a guy named Gary Marks. He's not really known for his acting, but I noticed that he has credits for writing episodes of Sleet Your Shorts and Bobby's World. And he is also a segment producer on the TV show, TV game show Studs. So very wide mm. discrepancy between Sleeker Shorts, Bobby's World, and Studs. But all shows I watched. Uh, and then Mr. Hernandez, the meat man, was played by Charles Martinet, who is best known as the voice of Mario, Luigi, Waluigi, Wario, in basically every single Nintendo game mm. since... 1996 his first role as mario was in 1991 for the mario teaches typing cd rom game okay so uh a couple bit parts for him other than mario games but um yeah the voice of mario is the meat man which is very strange to see he will not be playing mario in the upcoming movie that's chris pratt instead sadly yes yeah no awards to mention, so we can move on to true crime pop culture. Okay, so June 19th, 1991 was a Wednesday, and 
On this day, Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar surrenders to the police. So, all right, Pablo Escobar, if nobody knows who he is, was a Colombian drug lord and founder and leader of the Medellin cartel. He's, you know, dubbed the king of cocaine. He was the wealthiest criminal in history. He, it says here, he had estimated net worth of $30 billion by the time of his death, which is the equivalent to $64 billion as of 2021, while his drug cartel monopolized the cocaine trade in the U.S. in the 80s and early 90s. And... In 1991, Escobar surrendered to authorities and was sentenced to five years imprisonment on a host of charges, but struck a deal of no extradition with the Colombian president with the ability of being housed in his own self-built prison. But in 1992, Escobar escaped and went into hiding when authorities attempted to move him to a more standard holding facility, leading to a nationwide manhunt. And as a result, the Medellin cartel crumbled, and in 1993, Escobar was killed in his hometown by Colombian National Police a day after his 44th birthday. Hmm. I feel like I don't... I feel like I get him confused with other... Drug like lords. drug lords? Yeah, and cartel really? people. Like, I, I honestly didn't realize he was dead. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, he thought he's still like, alive? I think I'm probably, like, confusing, like, him and, like, El Chapo and, like, some of these other guys. Oh, okay. You, know? like, they all kinda, you think like, he's still alive? I don't, I don't... I mean, he honestly could be, right? Like, oh, who's uh, to say he didn't, like, fake his death through the club I mean, he got gunned down by police, but yeah, I don't know. They could The police could have lied yeah. and said whatever. If they're, if they're willing to, like, not extradite him to the U.S., who's to say they aren't gonna... Right. I mean, yeah, if I'm watching all these off. shows, like Ozark and whatever, but even... I've never watched Narcos, but apparently that's, like, you know, based on... Yeah. Him. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't follow the drug trades. <laughs> Me neither. Like, I just watch uh, shows that are um, fiction <laughs> based. Hopefully. So I mean, maybe maybe just the fact that you you hear the name so much that you kind of just think that oh he's still alive doing this. Yeah, yeah, it adds that immortality to him, I guess, a little bit. Yeah. So um, moving on to TV. On Wednesdays, I have more shows I've never heard of. So on Wednesday night, there was The Wonder Years. We've Gro- heard of that one. Yes, Growing Pains. Mm-hmm. Doogie Hauser, And then this show called Man, The Man in the Family. The Man in the Family? Yes. Okay. This only lasted seven episodes from June 19th until July 31st. So June 19th was, the, this was the first the premiere. Yeah. The premiere here. So it's just, this little blurb just says, the black sheep of the family takes over the family owned grocery store in Brooklyn following his father's death. Okay. And the only person that I recognize on this cast is Leah Remini. She was the daughter of this guy. The mm-hmm. guy, the father, his name is Sal Bavasso, and she was Tino Bavasso. The father is played by someone called, by someone by the name of Ray Sharkey. Ray Sharkey? We've seen him. He hosted an episode of SNL, like in that, Did sixth, he? In that sixth season. You know, after the main cast left. Oh, really? We started watching a few of those episodes. He was one of the hosts of that. So he was... I think he was, like, Oscar nominated for something. He was, But that um, was, like, his only major thing. He was a gold... He... Golden Globe. Golden Globe for The Idol Maker? Yeah. I don't know that movie. Yeah, me either. But, like, that's that was, like, his big thing. So he was the 
host for one of those? One episode of SNL. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. he was nominated for a Golden Globe for that movie. Like the Charles Rocket era. Yeah. Gil- Gilbert Gottfried, R.I.P. That's mostly what he's known more for, for, is for this movie, The Idol Maker, and then the role of Sonny Steelgrave in the TV series Wise Guy. He, only, he died in 1993. Mm. After Man, The Man and the Family is another show. I vaguely remember this. Um, this show called Equal Justice. Have you heard of this? It sounds like so many other different shows, though. So. Yeah, but this is another legal drama. It's just a series of the lives, like the love lives and like the trials and tribulations of the district attorney's office in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, Jane Kaczmarek was in it, hmm. as well as Sarah Jessica Parker. Interesting. And this, um, I'm kind of curious. It, it only lasted two seasons, but it w- was nominated for an Emmy Award in 1990 and in 1991. For outstanding directing in a drama series. I'm sure there's no way to watch it, but... Uh, if there is a way, I... T- like, you know, on... Yeah. To be or... Yeah, it, <laughs> I don't even it know. It seemed like it'd be something like that that would have it. But a lot of these quote-unquote failed shows just don't appear anywhere else. Yeah. Even successful ones are tough to find from that era. Mm-hmm. And then we have on CBS, there's Rescue 911, which, I don't know, that's a daily thing. After Rescue 911, this confused me because you had The Man and the Family on ABC, but on CBS you have a TV show called Family Man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's too many like the generic. Family of men, yeah. <laughs> there's too many like generic named TV shows, you know, and they're all like family. It's always like brothers like, and sisters. Yeah, sisters and siblings. And... Yeah. Brothers, Sibs sisters, and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> wives, children, yeah. husbands, cop, man, woman. Cop lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you have, this is the family man. And this was just a sitcom. It lasted one season, but it, I mean, it was 22 episodes. It's about um, a fire captain by the name of Jack Taylor, who is a recent widower trying to hold his family together with his the help of his inept father-in-law. And the father-in-law is played by Al Molinaro. Is that how you say his name? He He's Al in uh, Happy, Happy Days. Days. Yeah. And Joe Stay, his name... His, Al's name in the show is Joe. Joe's stay with the family after his daughter Terry's death was supposed to be temporary, but by the end of the pilot, he lives with them permanently. And it's just, you know, about this guy and his father-in-law raising his four children. All right. After that was uh, Jake and the Batman and then on NBC, we had an episode of Unsolved Mysteries, but this was, you know, a repeat. And it was, you know how it, it's just it's hard to repeat, find. repeat, yeah. It's hard to find these episodes. We without, don't have a TV guide. Yeah, if we don't one. have a TV guide, we don't know what episode it is. And then after all, these are all repeats on NBC. It's Night Court, Dear John, and then Quantum Leap. And then moving... On to music. I'm going to do the bottom five for June, as of June 22nd, 1991. Number 100 is the song Can You Stop the Rain by Peebo Bryson. That's a typical grocery store song. Yeah. Most of these seem like they were. Yeah. I'm going to say... Four out of the five five of these I've never heard of before. Number 99 is a song called My Heart is Failing Me by this group called Riff, which I've never even heard of until today. But that was 
14 weeks on the charts and it peaked at number 25. Number 90. Of those, like easy listening. Yeah, it's radio a lot of play, easy the top listening. Yeah. It's, this is that's like another song that you probably would have heard in a grocery store. Number 98. This was on the top cuz this was number 1 at some point. Cuz I remember us talking about this song before. It's uh Let the Beat Hit Him by Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam. Okay. And that was, this is the uh, the debut of it. So, like, maybe later in the year when whatever movie we talked about before. Yeah. And then number 97 is this song called Love Gets Rough by someone by the name of Troy Newman. I looked him up and he was, like, well, he was... He's an Australian singer, and he only had this one hit wonder in the States, but he's like an Australian singer. Okay. And uh, this song was only two weeks on the chart, and it's remained at number 97 last week, I guess. Or the week before this. Number 96 is another song and another person I've never heard of. Her name is Kitty, and the song is called Save Some Love. Kitty, K-E-E-D-Y. And I looked her up, and she opened for Michael Bolton in 1991 and 92 during his tour. Hmm. But this is her only song that made it on the Billboard charts, and she only had one album, and that was it. And it was in the year 1991. The album is called Chase the Clouds. Hmm. And that's it. That's all I know (laughs) about her. There was, like, not much info about her. Yeah, pre-internet people. Yeah. Unless, unless the artists go in and add stuff themselves, it's tough to get... Yeah. So we'll go on to rankings and ratings. Uh, on your one to five star scale, where are you going to put mom? Uh, I'm gonna give this a two. Yeah, it's probably pretty fair. On my zero to four star scale, I'm gonna say it's like a two and a half. It, it's above average. Um... It was a lot different than what I was expecting, but it wasn't disappointing to me. No, I was cracking up. <laughs> yeah, it was... The entire... No, I don't want to say the entire movie, but I was laughing. Yeah, it, it's... It takes you on a ride that you don't expect, um, but I really do wish there were more special effects and, and monster stuff in there. That would have bumped it up quite a bit. Every movie is worth watching again. Once, would you watch this again? Yeah, if this was playing at some, you know, Halloween 24-hour horror fest thing, then yes. Or if they did, like, a double feature of popcorn and then this movie, (laughs) then that would be cool. Yeah. I think this is one of the better horror movies that we've seen. I, I like this more than Terror Within... Well, you like almost everything better than two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I but, like I mean, it like, more than The Unborn, too. It's better than The Unborn. It's better than Freddy's Dead, in my opinion. Oh, as yeah. Well. Um, I think Popcorn is, and People Under the Stairs are the only two that probably beat it. Yeah. In the horror genre. So far for this year. Yeah, so far. We got a lot more horror that could be <laughs> taking over them at some point. Uh, but yeah, two and a half for me, and I guess I would definitely watch it again. I thought it was, you know, enjoyable. And. It might even be more enjoyable in a way since I know what to expect story-wise. Yeah. So, uh, if you out there want to watch Mom as of this recording in April 2022, it's available on Tubi, Digital Rental, or VHS. Check your local listings. As for us, you can listen to us on all your major podcasting platforms. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and tell your friends. It does help us out. You can email us at 1991 at Movie Rewind. You can email us at 1991moviewind at gmail.com. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Letterboxd, YouTube. Just search 1991 Movie Rewind. 
or go to 1991movierewind.com for the full list of movies along with show notes and more. Next week, we will see Gene Bates once again as we return to the flower theme, as we return to the wild theme when we watch Wild Orchid 2, Two Shades of Blue. That's available on digital rental, VHS, and DVD. We will see you then. Thanks.